Suppose you had been involved in a tragic accident, and all of the experts said you would never be able to walk again. Would you consider that awful? I would. In fact, I consider it one of the most awful and inspiring things I've ever read. Life is awful, but sometimes adding a missing piece or perspective can change something awful into something full of awe. I'm Seth Adam Smith, and this is Awful Inspiration. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Awful Inspiration. This is a, a show where I share a story, a true story, uh, that might sound awful at first, but if you step back, uh, maybe add a missing perspective or see the whole picture, uh, the meaning of that story completely changes from something that could be perceived or felt to be awful, but it's actually something that is truly inspiring or full of awe. So today I want to share with you the inspiringly awful story of Glenn Cunningham. Uh, Glenn Cunningham is 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 famous for uh, for something th that would seem rather ironic. Uh, around the around 1917, I I couldn't quite pin the year down in my research, uh, but around 1917, when Glenn Cunningham was about eight or seven years old. He suffered a tragic accident at his school. Glenn's brother Floyd accidentally put gasoline instead of kerosene in the can at his school. Now, I assume uh, that's either uh, a can at the building that he had to fill up for light or, or one at his desk. Um, and again, he had to fill it up for light in the building early in the morning. Um, but instead of putting in uh, kerosene, which, which, burns slower, you know, it's like on a wick. Um, he put gasoline in there and it exploded. Uh, Floyd, who was only 13 years old at the time, he died in the fire. Now, Glenn survived. Again, he was seven years old. He survived, but his legs were severely burned. Uh, in fact, he lost all of the flesh on his knees and his shins and all of the toes on his left foot. And in addition, his the, the transverse arch was practically destroyed from a fire. Uh, after examining his legs, the doctors of, at, at the time, you know, the experts at that time suggested uh, the best thing to do would be to amputate his legs. But Glenn uh, and his parents refused. The doctors um, weren't, weren't pleased with their refusal right? Because they're the experts. Um, and they offered a very grim forecast of Glenn's future, you know, being the experts. And they predicted that this child would never walk normally again, because they were, they were the experts. Now, in the beginning, uh, Glenn was very discouraged about this diagnosis. And he was depressed about his situation, but he soon found the determination to walk again, right? Defy the expert opinions about his, his situation. So in his book, and the book is called Never Quit, Glenn related the following experience, quote, one afternoon, a stout lady from Elkhart paid mother a visit. The visitor had a loud voice. When she prepared to leave, I could hear her talking outside. You may as well face it, my dear, she told mother. Glenn's going to be an invalid the rest of his life. When mother returned, ah. when mother returned, the look on my face told her that I had heard. She came over to the bed and sat down carefully on the edge of the mattress. I hurled the words at her. I'm not going to be an invalid. She's wrong, you know, wrong, you hear? Mother reached out, brushed back my hair from my sweaty forehead. She leaned over and kissed me on the cheek. 
Yes, Glenn, I know she's wrong. The words came soothingly, gently. I will walk again? This is the child, Glenn, now, now asking his mother, I will walk again? And his mother said, yes, Glenn, you will walk again. I will. And now I was screaming, I will, I will. And that's the end of the, the passage from his book. After years of retraining himself, Glenn was eventually able to walk and run again. In fact, he, he actually didn't start walking for another two years, uh, roughly two years after the accident. So in 1919, it says he started walking again. Not only that, but Glenn eventually became so good at running that he competed in the 1932 and 1936 Olympics, won numerous medals, and set world records for running the mile. Um, and if I remember correctly, he, he set the record for running the mile, at least in the United States, uh, and then everybody else was trying to beat him. And they eventually did, but he was the one who set the record for running the mile that everyone was trying to get to. He later penned these words, quote, you will never reach any higher than you aim, so set your goals high, then endeavor to reach them with honor and integrity, and never give up, close quote. Now, I also want to mention that Glenn not only had a positive mental attitude, which is good, but he also had a strong religious faith, a Christian faith. His favorite Bible verse was Isaiah 40, 31, quote, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I love that story because it reminds me of my brother David, who was burned when he was younger in a tragic accident. And if I finish this uh, video on time, I actually get to go see him. I'll probably go out to lunch. I'm going to make him pay for it. That uh, he is a, an accomplished mechanic. Uh, he was always building the tree forts, always using his hands, the hands that were burned. I've always been inspired by that. So if you've been involved in a tragic accident, I don't, I don't know what you are capable of, but I do know that you are capable of inspiring other people. And, uh, Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And remember, no matter what happens, make it an awful day.